So today on Hack Your Content, I'm going to be talking about shooting your own stock photos for the blogs that you're writing. And I'm just going to discuss how that's going to save you some time and money. So what you're going to learn today, uh, I'll talk about why I like to shoot my own photos instead of buying stock, uh, gear, software, and some workflows. And then strategies for building up your own catalog of images that you can reuse over and over again on your blogs rather than going out and purchasing these photos. So I like to shoot my own photos for my blogs rather than purchase stock photography because it really does show authority. So for instance, if you have a blog and it's in the outdoor space, and you are going to write a post about tents. Um, taking pictures of tents that you own uh, shows more authority than if you're just grabbing stock photos of tents from either a free stock photo site or a paid stock photo site. People like to know that you've actually held a product in your hand or you have some idea of what you're talking about and that you have some experience in the area that you're blogging about. So when you shoot your own photos, it helps you build a catalog of stock images that you can use multiple times and that you own. And this is going to save you a lot of money as opposed to going out and buying stock photos. Uh, stock photos come with a fee and they also have specific usage rights. And so you may only be able to use that stock photo one time throughout your blog rather than multiple times with pictures that you've taken and you own yourself. You know, and lastly, this is going to protect you from copyright infringement issues. So I realize there are plenty of places you can get free images. Um, but the thing is, you really need to be aware of the usage rights around those images and how many times they can be used and how they can be used. Um, the last thing you want to do is get sued by a photographer or, you know, have to at least pay for an image that you weren't expecting to. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the gear that I use. And basically, I just use my iPhone. So if you have a smartphone, you have a camera that will definitely give you enough quality for a blog post photo. Uh, lighting, I typically try to use natural lighting, uh, but of course you can purchase items like ring lights and soft boxes from uh, like Amazon.com and they'd work really well if you had to light something inside. Uh, software, there's free software like Photop.com. Photop.com is an Adobe uh, Photoshop clone. And if you have any experience with Adobe tools, uh, the interface will probably look pretty familiar. And then another tool that's very popular is Canva.com. It has a free and a paid version. Um, I use the paid version, but you don't have to. You can do quite a few things with the free version. And from the standpoint of workflow, you're just bringing an image into the image editor of your choice. You're cropping it, you're sizing it, you're exporting it, you're downloading it, and then you repeat. So, for example, here in photop.com, I have uh, a picture of one of my mountain bikes. So I try to take pictures in such a way that I can crop out multiple parts of that picture and make them into individual stock images. So, for example... If I was going to write uh, an article uh, or a blog post about flat mountain bike pedals, I'd simply go over to the rectangular selection tool. I'd select that pedal on the bike. I'd go to image, crop. So that's going to be its own individual image. I just want to check its size quickly to make sure it's the right size. I like my 
blog photos to be no wider than 600 pixels wide. So 570 by 564 is perfect. I say OK. And then I just do a file export as JPEG. So this is the image and you can see, you know, this was shot with an iPhone SE and just grabbing that section of the photo, it's nice and sharp and detailed and is more than good enough quality to use on a blog. So the one thing uh, with PhotoP, if you do decide to use it, a great tool or a great feature is the capability of, of adjusting a photo quality. So notice down here, the size of this photo is 137.9 kilobytes. You really want it more around 50K if you can. So you can slide the quality and bring it down. 54 is fine. You just want it smaller so people that are looking at your site with a, with a phone or an iPad, it's going to download faster for them. But this is particularly um, important for people that are using smartphones. They want the images to show up quickly especially if they're using their cell service as they look at your blog post. So you just name it Petals, save it. It downloads automatically, at least it does on a Mac. Um, I'm not sure how that would work on Windows. I haven't used Windows for a while. Um, but obviously this is a cloud tool, so you can use it uh, regardless of what kind of operating system that you have. So another great tool is Canva. And sometimes you want to take a photo. And in this case, this one is of handlebars on one of my mountain bikes. Well, I may not be able to cut this up into multiple photos like I could with a larger bike picture where I can grab a section that would be the pedals or the tires or the shock or the rear cassette or the saddle. Um, but I want to be able to use this image twice and I want to use it on another blog post talking about, for example, if I was writing about mountain bike accessories. So I would go to edit image. I'd go over to the Canva photogenic filters. And then what you're able to do when the photogenic filters appear is just to change the overall look of that photo. And so a lot of times when I want to use a photo twice in my blog for across different articles, I may do something like simply change it into a black and white photo. And the reason I do this is I, I like to try to use, reuse photos if I can. So now I have a color version of this and then I'd have a black and white version. I could use them on different related blog posts. The chances of somebody seeing this photo twice, not likely unless there's somebody who reads every single one of my blog posts. So to wrap up, you don't need a lot of expensive gear and you want to think of turning one photo into many photos. This is going to allow you to build up your own catalog of stock images that you can use and reuse on your blogs. And remember, using your own photos does show topical authority. So people will uh, begin to recognize you as an expert in your area. And this is only going to lead to more people linking to your site, which is going to build up your domain authority and get you more traffic. So that's it for this episode of Hack Your Content. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if it's been helpful for you. Thank you. Bye.